Well, it would seem appropriate that I would wind up recanting Young Earth creationism and embracing evolution on National Evolution Day. Um, today's leading stories are what finally changed my mind. Scientists successfully make life in the lab. An astounding fossil find of multiple hominid ancestors found in the Afar region of Africa completes the evolutionary tree of man and compelling comments left by our viewers. This is a special edition of Genesis Week for April 1st, 2012. And uh, welcome to this special edition of Genesis Week, which maybe I'll have to come up with a new name for the show or Maybe this will be the last show I ever do. I'd say click subscribe up above, but after hearing what I have to say, you probably won't want to. And maybe I'll just be shutting down my YouTube channel after this anyway, so what's the point? Well, researchers at Harvard successfully produced life in the lab from basic chemicals that are theorized to be present in the primordial soup of Earth before life. The team of 24 researchers published their findings in the peer-reviewed journal, Nature. Therefore, it must be legitimate science. Dr. Fabro Cation, lead researcher of the team of 23 PhDs and undergrads who spearheaded the project, said this in an interview. The results of the experiment are nothing less than stunning. We built a large, fairly complex apparatus to simulate the world as it was before there was any life. We had to remove oxygen and keep the first section of the machine in the dark because ultraviolet light, like that emitted from our sun, would break the water apart into hydrogen and oxygen and would contaminate the experiment, making the building blocks of life impossible. We boiled the water, which went through methane, hydrogen, and lightning to produce some amino acids, but this first part produced both right and left-handed amino acids, and life only uses left-handed amino acids. So these amino acids went through a complex filter, which labeled and removed any right-handed amino acids. But this first system only produced five of the necessary 20 amino acids, so we have three other systems just like the first, with different gas mixtures, to produce all of the needed 20 amino acids. And after all the right-handed amino acids are filtered out, the left-handed amino acids all come together into one chamber. Water was needed to make the amino acids, but water prohibits the amino acids from joining together into proteins, so the next chamber removes all water. Previous research in the lab had shown us how to make self-replicating RNA, which is half of the DNA which allows the machinery in the cell to make cell parts. The original researchers used RNA from living organisms. We found when we made our own RNA that the sequences of letters were random. Uh, there was no actual information in the code, so we couldn't make any proteins because the assembly of the amino acids was random. So we used RNA from a cow in our experiment to simulate the world as it was before life. We then built an incredible machine which took us four years to develop that would read the RNA and assemble the amino acids we made into a sequence dictated by the RNA. This enabled us to make a fully assembled, completely artificial cow heart that came out the other end of the apparatus. The heart was technically not alive because it needs the rest of the cow's organs and support systems and the rest of the cow needs the heart, but technically it's like we produced life in the lab. But the amazing thing is, this is all completely within the realm of what the Earth was like in the beginning, before life, and the machine sits there and makes cow parts and requires no intelligence whatsoever. This should finally silence those creationists who run around saying the origin of life is impossible without life. I mean, clearly there was no intelligence guiding this experiment whatsoever.
Well, you can't argue with science. I mean, Dr. Cation is a well-respected biologist. He must be right. I mean, he was even the science advisor for the Ethics Committee of Planned Parenthood and won the court case for them by providing a compelling case to the judge that a fetus was not actually life. Incredibly, in the same issue of Nature, uh, a team of scientists from the Institute of Human Origins published a remarkable find of a series of hominid ancestors, making a complete line of our ancestral lineage. Dr. Noah Lott gave us an exclusive interview. This first one was found in rock, dated 4.5 million years old, exactly the age we thought it would be. It took 37 separate radiometric dates before we got the date we knew was correct. And from this bone fragment, we knew it looked like this. We called it Arthopithecus jubigenus. The second fossil dated at 3.7 million years old. As you can see from the artist's reconstruction and the age of the fossil, this is the next step in the ape to man evolution. This is Australopithecus jubigenus. This third one, Kenyathropus jubigenus is actually constructed from these bones. These bones are found roughly 23 kilometers apart. We know they're from the same creature because the bones were found in the same layer. This was the only creature around at this time based on these bones and we figured he looked like this. These fossils were solidly dated at 2.8 million years old. Paranthropus jubigenus. Paranthropus jubigenus was dated using 10 different dating methods that, that did not agree. But because we knew the fossil was 1.5 million years old, we went with the uranium lead date of 1.5 million years. As you can see in this artist's reconstruction, this is the next step in the evolution of man. We finally reached the pinnacle. Homo jubogenus, clearly the final step in our ascent from monkeys. When we found the bone, we knew that because of its age, it would be homo, but it didn't look like homo. It almost looked like a part of a leg bone of a rabbit or something. Because we knew it was a human arm bone, I just reshaped it to what it should have looked like. Our artist then drew a reconstruction of what our ancestor looked like. As you can see, it's clearly our ancient human ancestors. It was this fossil evidence that was the clincher. I mean, I just can't argue with it. And of course, when we look through the fossil record, we see that coelacanths have evolved into coelacanths. Willemi pines have evolved into Willemi pines. I mean, the fossil record is clear evidence of evolution. I have no choice but to concede that evolution must be true. Woohoo! Mail for me! So the Science Foundation wrote in, again, but this time he finally made a good point with regards to the truth of evolution and showing how genetic entropy really is evolution. Wazulu's comments about genetic entropy are all wrong. The genome is deteriorating over time. That proves evolution. I refuted his genetic entropy arguments here. And after watching his video, which is conveniently linked here, I have to admit I was impressed with the evidence. YouTuber Bill Loney was also wrote in regarding last week's show. You're a fat, crazy buffoon who, expletive deleted, Expletive deleted, expletive deleted, expletive deleted, expletive deleted, cars, and expletive deleted, expletive deleted, boomerangs. But when the expletive deleted, expletive deleted, snow comes, you go flying, expletive deleted, expletive deleted, and expletive deleted. When are you going to expletive deleted, expletive deleted, and get a brain? Well, thanks for writing in, Bill. You'll be happy to know that your comment helped to convince me that I must be wrong in my science. Cheeseburger also wrote in with regards to what I said about the evolution of birds. At Wazulu, you got it all wrong. 
Just because we find fossil birds 100 million years before the dinosaurs doesn't mean they didn't evolve from the dinosaurs. It just means that they lived at the same time. When are you going to get that through your thick skull? Thanks for writing in, Chi. I, I see your point now. What you're saying is just because I was born before my grandfather doesn't mean that I can't live at the same time as my grandfather. I agree, and I didn't understand that before, so thank you for clarifying. Yuri Nelesis also asked, Ian, I read somewhere that fish had evolved into tetrapods and there was tons of fossil evidence for it. Can you comment? Thanks for writing in, Yuri. I did discuss this evidence before and was then shown how wrong I was in the comments left by the skeptics. Uh, I posted a retraction of my previous claims here in the video, Never Gonna Tell a Lie, which you can watch by clicking on the video. Well, I guess that's it for this week and probably forever. I'm Ian Juby signing off probably for good because if evolution's true, then there's no point in making a weekly show about creation. So let us remember the words of Darwin who wrote in an email while on board the Beagle to his good friend James Hutton saying, April Fools. <laughs>